This video is sponsored by Linode. Check the link down below for a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and get your very own Five, Linux server four, spun up with three, ease. Two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. It's here, it's launched, it's landed. Apollo has landed. This is Endeavor OS, the Apollo edition. Endeavor OS personally is what I believe to be the very best Arch-based Linux distribution, if that is something that you're interested in diving into. With this new release, there are a lot of minor changes, a lot of really nice fixes that will prevent a lot of issues. Opening up Firefox here, this is the release announcement. You can see the Apollo release has landed. I'm not gonna dive into every single little new feature and fix, but they did fix a lot of different minor issues, such as this one right here. If you selected XFCE and i3 during installation, there were some issues that's fixed. Um, community editions now have their uh, dedicated display manager. There's a different order in the desktop environment. Some new information buttons. Bluetooth is now enabled. Some status progress bars during installation. Uh, I'll leave this link down below so you can check out every single change. If we go down here, these are new features and fixes on the installed system. So this up here is the ISO fixes. Right here is what you'll actually notice after installing. There's a couple new uh, GUI applications which we're gonna be diving into in just a bit. Firewalled is now uh, the default and enabled. And they have a new uh, NVIDIA driver installer which is gonna be very helpful for some people. And then Worm, a brand new window manager. I'm gonna to try to install this and see if I could get it figured out. But it's gonna be more of a, uh, when I get to that point, it's gonna be more of a uh, first impression type thing. So we'll see if I will, uh, be able to figure it out. I'm not really a window manager user. I kind of dabbled in i3, but nothing much past that. What I'm actually in right here is the live disk image. This ships with uh, XFCE by default. And when you launch the installer, uh, let's just go ahead and do that. When we launch the installer, we have two methods, online and offline. Offline is going to give you what you see right here, which is the standard XFCE desktop with the Endeavor OS theming. Online will let us pick our desktop. So if I go and go online, we can see some of the official options we have available to us. So if I just go next, next, this is just a typical Calamars installer. Nothing too exciting about it other than it just works better. There used to be some issues where it would like hang up on first launch, but all that has seemed to uh, been remedied. So here are all the desktops. Of course you could go no desktop, but we have XFCE, i3, Plasma, Gnome, Cin Cinnamon, Mater, Mate, Bungie, LXDE, and LXQT. So really whatever tickles your fancy, you could go ahead and install. A lot of the times I go with GNOME, I find it to be a, a oddly pleasant combination when it comes to running the system. But if I close this, close this out, I'm gonna go no. Oh wait, close this out and go yes. And uh, install the community edition. So if I click this right here, it's going to open this up and kind of the same process. Next, next, next. Uh, you erase the entire disk. If you are interested, you could go better FS uh, or in addition, you could do a swap to file, really whatever you want. I generally just stick with ext4 unless a better FS is the default. So next, and here we have the community editions. A lot of these are just your uh, tiling window manager options. Uh, such as BS, PWM, Openbox, Qtile, Sway, and Worm. Sway is personally one of my favorites. It's a, uh, it's not a i3 fork. It's completely rewritten, but it uses like the same config and all that. So Sway, Sway is pretty cool. We're going to be installing Worm today just because it's new and we're going to try it out. So Worm is a teeny dynamic tag based window manager written in the NIM language. No idea what that is. It supports both floating mode and master stack tiling with gaps and struts. Warning, early development version uh, may include not fully working parts. So I'm gonna expect that going into this. So under packages, we get some customization options. Obviously go with your base devil and common packages. If you open that up, you could see everything it's going to install. We want all that. I'm gonna go with Firefox. Here we have LTS kernel in addition. You could go with the Zen kernel. You could go ahead and enable printing support if you would like to. And we have some accessibility tools. Right here under Worm Edition, if you do pick a different desktop environment such as a KDE Plasma, you'll have a lot of options here to enable or disable various packages. For this, let's go ahead and go next. Give this a quick little fill out. So this is gonna be Brandon at Worm, which is gonna be my system. Uh, log in, let's do the same for admin, next, oh god, there we go, next, and install, install now. 
So here we go, we have our little progress bar, and of course we're gonna get the slideshow of everything that it's doing. All right, all done. Let's go ahead and restart this system. Let's go done. Endeavor OS. Endeavor. Ooh, little, little stretchy. Let's try to go in there and fix this real quick. Thunder text editor XFCE terminal. So this is floating mode and I can't seem to snap the windows. I'm assuming these are going to be my workspaces. I can't see one though. Where's one at? Three, one. <laughs> so you can just get this. It's yay worm get if you're interested in trying this out on your Archbase system. So this is where the startup script is worm rc under dot config in your home. Key bindings worm does not have a built in keyboard mapper. So super enter, which is pretty standard. Do we have NeoFetch? We do. So I'm running this on VMware. We are using the worm window manager. Super cool, running bash about 800 or so packages. Let's just go check out these worm config files here. So RC was a startup script, right? So if we go nano RC. Okay, so here is the startup bash script, screen layout monitor sh. So I'm assuming that's the uh, resolutions and all that. We have the uh, background, which right now it's kind of screwed up because they changed the resolution after the fact. Frame, pixels, interactive pixels. So this is some configuration options. So you could get down to specific button config. So we have the uh, close PNG under buttons. So you could add your own custom ones. Button size, border width, struts, gaps and layout floating. Is there a config example somewhere? So can I just execute this as a command? This is pretty cool. Uh, X, paste that in. Oh, yep, that did something. Oh, there we are. Okay, so now it's tightly. Covered up the taskbar for some reason. Oh, now it's floating again. <laughs> it's cool you can execute some of these commands after the fact, but it's probably smart just to go and edit that configuration with everything how you would like. Uh, like I said, obviously, as you can see me trying to finick around with this, I'm not really uh, very good at tiling window managers. Oh, I see. The one button's over here for some reason. And then if I go two, three, four. Where are these windows at? Holy crap, I'm an idiot. Well, I tried. I, tr I tried to use Worm. Um... Uh, not my thing. <laughs> do, 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 do. Boop. Let's boot into our CD drive. Shout out to XR and R. Can we just all thank the uh, XR and R developers? We are now in an environment in which is more familiar. I also could have just clicked on this and done this, but whatever. Let's uh, let's let's go with something I'm a little more familiar with. Let's try out Plasma, shall we? And here you can see what I mean with there being more options like I talked about earlier, Kitty desktop, if I go ahead and open that up, you have a lot of the different K packages in which you can change, but you could also install multiple desktop environments if you would like to here. I'm just gonna leave this as is, go next, fill all this out and then reboot the system. All right, much better. We're in a KDE Plasma here. One thing I have to know, th this has always been an issue. I'm not sure why or how, but, down here, then this is an Endeavor OS specific thing. The uh, Discover Store, when you install KDE Plasma, one, the icon doesn't work. Click on the icon. We have an unknown application folder error. Ever since I've started using Endeavor OS, uh, or since I the first time I've used it, it's always been like that. It, I don't know why, but. So with that, what we're gonna do is check out some of the new applications. This, I actually have an application menu so if I do EOS, this is how we're gonna see some of these applications. So the first thing is the Endeavor OS Quick Start Installer. So let's go ahead and open that up. Uh, graphically, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world. It's got the little uh, X window icon. Uh, if we go audio player, so it looks like it's just a simple uh, check box type thing, which I mean, this is kind of nice. If I want to go ahead and grab uh, Chromium, uh, they should add an edge in here, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, communication. Uh, it doesn't look like Discord is in there, so I don't want any of that. Development tools, code is always good. Qt Creator, PyCharm, email. Uh, they don't have MailSpring, so it's missing a lot of the applications that I would want. Uh, ooh, we have GIMP. There we go. GIMP. Um, whoa. I think that's it. Image viewers, I don't care. Math, I don't care. Uh, 
office. So let's get the LibreOffice fresh PDF viewers. I should already have what I need, which is this one that it says installed. It should block off the little, oh, it is blocked off. It should, it should kind of get rid of this, uh, the checkbox or something. Uh, personal finance. There's not much uh, GNU cache. I haven't used any of these before. Uh, text editors. This is what I'm curious about. Let's see. They have Adam. Kate is obviously pre-installed. Gedit. Nothing here I would really want. Under torrent clients, they have transmission, which is the one I tend to use. Qubit torrent and ktorrent are also pretty good, but transmission is just a good go-to. Uh, video players. If they have MPV, life is good. They don't have MPV. That's a sad day. Um, there should be more options. Uh, graphically, it's a little too simple, but to each their own. Install now. There we go. So here is everything it's going to go ahead and install. So I just hit enter to confirm that and enter to resume. There we go. So I should have all of those now. What it does, it says I do. And if I go transmission QT, transmission QT is right here. Perfect. Now the next one was EOS package list. So if I go dash, so it's not showing up in the menu. Let's open up this welcome dialog again and see if we can find it. Uh, add more apps, choose popular apps to install. That's what we just saw. Tips. Ooh, NVIDIA users. Is this that new NVIDIA application? No, it's not. Let's look that up. New NVIDIA driver installer. So, so it's a, uh, this is a terminal command. Paste that in there, zoom in a little, hit enter. Oh, okay. Dash H. All right. <laughs> Maybe I need the NVIDIA card detected or something like that. There was package management. Oh, these are all just web links, personal commands. Really everything is just web link. Like I get it, it's important, but it'd be cool if this was like more internal. Okay, I'm, I'm done looking at that. So cool update, not a lot of uh, feature changes, mostly it seems to be uh, journal fixes and uh, improvements. It, it's just, there's still things not working right. This thing, I'm, I've been waiting for that to get fixed. I don't know how that hasn't been noticed. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I've ever installed this on Plasma, the Discover, just that button default has not worked. I mean, it's not even, like they completely removed it, but they didn't go through and like clean it up enough. I don't know. But still, a lot of good changes. It's going in the right direction. Um, I, I personally still am preferring Fedora a lot more to Endeavor or any other Arch-based system. But at the moment, Endeavor is definitely my uh, number two favorite Linux distribution. So with that, we're going to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. If you are looking to go ahead and host your very own services on the web, Linode is a fantastic option for you. They have a whole bunch of easy one-click installers to get things up and running, such as Minecraft servers, WordPress websites, ghost websites, which is what I'm actually currently running through Linode to host techhut.tv. And overall, they just have a whole bunch of developer tools and features that will give you anything you need when it comes to hosting your Linux servers. Uh, so with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, links to everything I mentioned will be down below. And goodbye.